start with the first presentation. Um, so I'm John Covey, and my presentation was on electron dispersion analysis of pretty much all 2D raw data devices. But a fairly large amount of data to get through, so I'm going to go fairly quickly, so please forgive me on that. Uh, this talk will do mostly analysis beyond the hexagonal lattice that we've come to know and love. But having said that, um, if you look around us and you concentrate as much as we have as electrical engineers, we spend most of our lives studying and meditating on the electromagnetic force, something that's so ubiquitous that it permeates pretty much everything and it binds the universe together. Um, and really, what we want to be able to do more than anything is to feel and intuit this force as much as possible. If we do truly become masters of this force, then we can really become as powerful as, say, Master Yoda. Um, on this talk, um, the things I'm going to cover are the two body lattices, what they are, and then the type of analysis done on these 2D lattices via uh, nearest neighbor type binding. Then we're going to check ourselves with a lattice that we already know. And then after that, we're going to do a sweep through all the possible 2D space and check those results and then analyze whether or not we've really covered all of two-dimensional lattices and then end with a bit of exotic results. So 2D Brave lattices, there are oblique lattices, rectangular lattices, centered rectangular lattices, hexagonal lattices, and square lattices. If you look at this long enough, you'll see that all that's really changing are bond angles and bond lengths really over this space, and that ultimately the motivation behind this is to try to show that these are actually degenerate for the most part, and that if we are able to analyze them as a whole, that would really be the most advantageous. So we'll start first with the lattice that we're familiar with, um, just to get a good feel for the analysis itself. We'll start with the hexagonal lattice for carbon, and we will do the nearest neighbor type binding theorem to do that analysis. What is that exactly? Well, we pretty much did that in the homework in the one-dimensional case. And so what we do here is, when we solve for the Hamiltonian, we had two atoms on either side of the center atom that were delta functions. The electrostatic potential of those atoms is tightly localized in our approximation. That's why they're delta functions. These two delta functions are equidistant and in real space, they're delta functions. In inverse space, that becomes a cosine. So the analysis here is really no different. It's just in two dimensions. So we have a delta function in the three corners. And each delta function will actually create its own waveform propagating in different directions. And when those three waveforms interfere, this is the actual MATLAB code that I generated using that analysis I just spoke of, uh, you get this <coughs> diagram, which we are very comfortable and familiar with. And the analysis matches the most simplistic uh, band analysis that we have in chapter three, with the gamma, kappa, and m points all matching up. So now that we have that analysis, Let's start to play around a little bit. The first thing that we can do is just simply change the bond length. In silicon, the bond length is slightly longer. And if we take the same graphene lattice and we change that bond length, the other thing we have to take into account is that gamma will change. Gamma is electrostatic attraction. So if we do an inverse uh, square law uh, to compensate for the distance increase in bond length, we get a different corresponding gamma, which is 44% the gamma for carbon. And likewise, you'll see that the actual behavior of the band structure is identical, except that the band has been lessened by 44%. This peak is just below 4 electron volts. So beyond that, let's move on to a square lattice. Uh, you'll see the band structure in the bottom left and the top right. And this is horizontal and vertical slices showing a cosine. And this is a diagonal slice of the band structure. This really shouldn't be too surprising. We have two delta functions in the vertical causing a cosine in the vertical, and two delta functions in the horizontal causing a cosine in the horizontal. When these interfere, we get this band structure. And it's interesting to notice, first, it's not surprising. 
comprising that horizontal and vertical slices, we have cosines uh, that actually touch right.